Hi Flyers. Good morning. Welcome to my life class, dear Flyers. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's another Saturday live with the coach. And today we will be having an educative discussion about the practical guides to effective translation. Practical guide to effective translation. I want to go live on Instagram as well. You're now live. Good. Welcome, dear flyers, to another interesting moment with me, Abdul Baki Hassan, the admin of this group. And if you're watching from Instagram, I'm the admin at Flying Colors Tutor. Okay, welcome once again. Today we will be having an active discussion about translation. Before we get started, we should know the meaning of translation, right? It may not be what you've always known. Like I said, we need to confirm the meanings of words, even if we've known them for a long time. It may not be the meaning that people accrue to them. They may have different meanings. Translation is just transporting a message from the source language to a target language from the source language to the target language. For example, if, okay, this is a book, for instance, this is a book, English Phonetics and Phonology. It's written in English. And I want Yoruba speakers of, Yoruba speakers who do not understand English to have access to the book. What do I do? I have to translate the book from English to Yoruba language. For example, we have phonetics in Yoruba language as well. We have phonetics in English language. So I have to translate the text from English language to Yoruba language. That's translation. I change the language from its source language. The source language is the language that the book is written in. That is English. The target language is the language that I'm trying to transport this book from to from the, this book is written in english language that is the source language if i translate from english to yoruba language that is the source the, the, the target language is yoruba language and this is the source language english language source language so transporting text from the source language to the target language is what we call translation that's translation written a book there is another term, another term that looks exactly like translation, but it is in translation. When you transport speeches from the target language, because if you're joining me from anywhere, let me know where you're joining me from. Tell me your name and also where you're watching me from. Your name and where you're watching from. So we have an active discussion. Thank you. If there's another term that looks like translation, but it is in translation exactly. When you transport speeches, when you transport written text from the source language to the target language, that is translation. When you transport a speech, you know, speech, written text, what you've written, what you've written, written text, what you've written down with your pen or what is printed, while speeches are what you say with your mouth. Speech is what I'm saying right now, this is a speech. If you want to translate this from English, for example, to another language, maybe you are Igbo or you are Yoruba, you need to translate the te you need to translate from English. What you're doing now isn't translation. If you write that thing down, it's translation. If you're actually saying that with your mouth, just as okay, I want to have today's life class is going to be you translating from what I've said from English to your language, for instance. 
you have you thus interpretation not translation written text you use translation speeches you use interpretation when you transport speeches from the source language to the target language you're interpreting when you transport a written text where you transport a written text from its source language to the target language you're translating there's another term that is in tr tr translation when for example you're listening to me right now thanks for joining me ma'am thanks for joining me i have people from lagos thanks so much for being there at all times you've always been here you've been in my paid classes and you always appear live thank you so much ma'am you're welcome Aisha Abdurafi Abdurazak, Aisha from Abuja, welcome, welcome, welcome. Rukoya Jaye Simi from Ogun State, thanks for joining me. Olawale Farouk from Kwara, thanks for joining me, everyone. Now, yes, good. Thanks for joining me. Now, if you listen to someone and you please answer in the comment section if you know. If you listen to someone and you're writing the exact thing that that person says, you're not translating. You're not transporting from uh, from uh, the source language. When it's written, it's translation. When it's, it's, it's a speech, it is interpretation. When it is speech, when you're transporting a speech into writing, what is it called? Answer me in the comment section and let's move on. Babajide Uthman Adiemi, thanks for joining me. When you transport a speech into written, what is it called? Type, I don't know. If you do not know, type the answer if you know. Subtitles, no, not subtitles. Subtitles, what you see, no, 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 no. Subtitle, when you watch a movie, when you watch a movie and for example you're watching a korean movie or you're watching a yoruba movie and that movie they speak yoruba for instance and while they speak yoruba you have the written text in english subtitles english subtitles that's english subtitles if you watch subtitles it's also called subtitles if they're speaking yoruba and the text were written in yoruba beneath the screen that subtitle it's another it's another thing i shared uh, uh, a set of subtitles yoruba subtitles via whatsapp sellers how many of you saw that okay so it's not in it's not su subtitle they're not called subtitles allow ali farouk interpretation not interpretation interpretation is when i listen to you in your language and I transport. If you listen to the radio when an ustad or a pastor is talking in English or Yoruba, there's another person beside that person, beside that religious leader, trying to change that language from Yoruba to English. That's interpretation. Interpretation of text. Translation. Um Anas Aziza Balogun. How's your son? How's my brilliant boy? It's not translation, ma'am. Rukwa Jaisimi, I don't know. To save our time, Aisha Abdurafi Abdurza, it's not translation. It is called transcription. Write that down. It's called transcription. When you listen to me and you write what, it, there are people who are professional transcribers. That's what they do. If you check um, Fiverr, there's this network, network for freelancers and people who want the services of freelancers. The networks, Fiverr, Upwork. When you go to them, you see many people, they're looking for transcribers. You listen to me, the only thing you're meant to do is, you listen to the speech and you write everything that you hear, you write them down. There are also applications that help you to transcribe. There are applications that help you to transcribe. On Google Play Store, if you search text to transcription, you get the app. I use text to transcription. Sometimes I do not want to write and maybe I just came back from after working, after being stressed and swamped. The only thing I want to do is just to relax on my bed and I won't be able to type. So I just text. So if you speak 
with clear diction. If you speak with clear diction, you pronounce your words correctly, that application will help you to transcribe the same thing you say, you're saying. Except for mistakes, the, as the same thing you say would be what you get. However, if you do not, if you speak Yoruba English or Nigerian English, it's made translate because it translates what it says. However, you still need to check. For example, if you say something like ha height, high, for something to be high. The, tr the pronunciation of high, H-I-G-H, -H, please type in the comment section as I talk so that everyone gets what I'm trying to say. Olawale Farouk, Aisha Abdurafi, Abdurazak, Muteas, Adifok, Abdurab, type in the comment section. Thanks so much, ma'am. It's transcription. I was talking about transcription. Yes, I was talking about transcription. It translates what it hears. So you just dictate and you get what you want to say via the mobile application. But you still need to check machine translations and ma machine interpretations plus transcriptions because they're not usually perfect. When, because hi, when you say hi, for instance, it's misspelled H-I-G-H. -H. And that's when you ask, when you say hi, my name is Abdulbaki Hassan. Yes, Um Anas Azizabalugu, thank you so much. Those both words have the same pronunciation. Hi and hi. H I G H plus H I. Both of them have the same pronunciation. So when you say to the machine translation, hi, I'm Abdul Baki Hassan. And what you get is H I G H. It's just guess. It's not perfect, you know. It's just like, oh, what are you trying to say? and it's right that so you still have to check to confirm if that translation that tra tra transcription is correct or not so we have different kinds of transla uh, transcription it's maybe written transcription and it's maybe phonetic transcription written transcription is what you say written transcription is what you say so if you're writing if you want to transcribe this live video, for, for instance, when I started, I said, Hi, I'm Abdul Baki Hassan, the admin of this group. And if you're watching from Instagram, I'm the admin as Flying Colors Tutor. So what you'll be writing is everything you've know, you, you, you're hearing. Hi, I am Abdul Baki Hassan. That's reaching transcription. That's the most popular trans form of transcription. There's another form of transcription. It's called the phonetic transcription. Phonetic transcriptions. For phonetic transcriptions, you're not transcribing words. You're transcribing what you hear into sounds, the pronunciation. So instead of hi, for instance, um uh, anas azizabalogo, you can help with the transcription in the comment section, please. Or anyone who has taken any of my courses in pronunciation. So instead of H I, you rather write H. AI. Okay, I can type on Instagram but not on Facebook. So let me type on Instagram. Hi. Now, Nena Beke, if you're watching, please type in the comment section. Okay. You have H A I for phonetic transcription, not H I G. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, that is transcription. So that's for phonetic transcriptions. So these terms have differences. They're not the same. Transcription is different from translation. Translation is different from interpretation. Interpretation, they're all different from subtitles. So you need to get the exact word that's being used for that, for the context you want to work with. But all of them are about something, transporting from, most of them are about something, transporting from the source language to the target language. The source language, the, 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 lang, the original language that the text was written in. The target language, the language you're trying to transport the source language into. Target language, source language, okay? So when I say, Throughout the class, I may not be saying the language you want to trans uh, the translate to the original language. I will just say the source language, the target language, and I trust you will get it. Many of you are brilliant. High flyers. Yes, now let's go on. 
I wrote many things here. Okay. So, translations are usually logically analyzable. You should be able to tell me that, okay, these are the set of words in the source language. And these are the set of words I'm translating that source language into. You must be able to logically analyze what you've done. For instance, if you're translating Yoruba from Yoruba language from English language into Yoruba language and you hear something like bouncing baby boy how do you translate bouncing baby boy from English language to Yoruba language I told you you must be able to analyze logically after your translation you must be able to tell me that this word means bouncing the second word means baby this other word means boy it must be logically analyzable you must be able to and it's a it's it's a form of science it's an art you must be able to explain how you arrive at your translation so someone should translate in the comment section balancing baby boy so as i wait i want to uh, um i want to explain more things with regard to using the word translate translate the word bouncing baby boy as i move on we have phrasal verbs that you use translate with many sometimes translate may not mean to translate from one language to another language sometimes it may mean another thing for instance if i say that doesn't translate as something it means that thing doesn't mean the other thing for example you may say i translated his nodding has approval you ask someone a question and the person nodded that means many times it means the person says yes it means it's translated has approval you use the word translate as despite the fact that you're not translating you can use that phrasal verb to mean that something is something translate something has something okay no one has given me the answer to bouncing baby boy Bouncing baby boy, if you are Yoruba or Igbo or Hausa, translate bouncing baby boy from English to your language. Who is there? No. Fatima Salahuddin, that's uh, that's a literal translation. Hello, Abdul Hamid Jumakefada, thanks for joining me. Who else wants to try? Omokuri Lanti Lanti, yes, Omokuri Lanti Lanti. If it's a bouncing baby, it will be Omotustunjo Lolo. There must be something that translates as bouncing. And you need to ask yourself, we'll get there, what are the steps? what are the steps do you need to what are the steps do you need to take what steps do you need to take in order to arrive at the correct translation from one language to another language okay now let's move on yes thanks so much i just wanted to show you that translation isn't just let me do this you must be able to ask yourself how did i arrive at this why do I think this is correct? Okay. Logically analyzable. What about, okay, last, Rayeye Jariri, I can't speak, I was Muhammad CDA, Abu Bakar, thanks so much. All right. Aside from bouncing baby, but there's another example. When you want to say another thing, like I, I mentioned in the last class that, for example, in his birthday suit, what you want to say in his birthday suit in his <laughs> I shall have the roughy <laughs> in his birthday suit when if you want to translate the words the idiom from Yoruba to English that idiom ni ihohu omoluabi ni ihohu omoluabi how do you translate that in English if you say the person uh, the person is naked the person is naked also means naked but what where is Amaluabi? 
Where is Amaluabi? That word Amaluabi. You're communicating the meaning, but you're not allowing the person who is reading that text in its in their target's language to get the exact me meaning, the exact emotion, the exact feeling that the person who is reading that text in the source language you did not make them feel the same way. As a good translator, if the if the writer writes in the in the source language, you should be able to translate that that same thing in the target language and make the readers feel the same thing, the exact feeling, the exact emotion, the exact sort of thinking. If you're translating an idiom from Yoruba, it should be an idiom, a proverb. It should be a proverb. So if you say naked, you've not done justice to that expression ni yuhu omoluabi you rather say in his birthday suit not in complete nakedness not stark naked in his birthday suit write that in the comment section in his birthday suit when someone is in their birthday suit they are stark naked but in his birthday suit is an idiom that justifies and perfectly translates ni ihuhu omoluabi are you getting me well done sabur abu, abu israel welcome um honors incomplete nakedness not snack naked it's what i just said good Are we getting this? Do you get this? Let me know in the comment section if you're moving. Not sweets. This word is, is pronounced sweets. S-U-I-T-E. Eco Hotels and Sweets. S-U-I-T is suits. S-U-I-T-E is sweets. Yeah. Both words are not homophones. Oh yeah, in his birthday suit. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going. So translation, that tells you that translation is not easy. It's not just something... Oh, can you speak English? Yes. Can you speak Yoruba? Okay. Come, 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 come. Come translate this for me. It's not that easy. The person must be grounded in the use of both languages. Despite being grounded, you still can't tell yourself, oh, I'm an expert. I won't have any problems. That happens to Professor Wale Shoinka. All of you know that professor. He was asked, he was, he was asked to Sabu Sabur Abu Israel. It's not sweets. S U I T he isn't spelled S U I T. There are different words. Sweet and suit. Uh, suit. Sweet has the same pronunciation as S W E E T. While S U I T S U I T. Yeah. Did I? Yes, yes, yes. Muhammad Sidi Abu Bakar. You got that right. It's not easy. Professor Wale Shoinka was asked to translate a text. He was asked to translate a text. That text was written by Daniel D.O. Fagwa. Baba Daniel. That man who's written lots of... He, okay, the man is dead already. So, he, that man wrote many classic Yoruba texts. Ninu Igbo, Ele Dumari. Many texts full with Yoruba words, the ancient Yoruba words that many of us may not <laughs> know. And many of the things that the man writes about, the man wrote about back then in it, while he was alive, were about the maestrous things. Wale well, Shorinka said, when he translated one of the texts in, in, in the forest of El Elodumari, that's the translated text, Ninu Igbo, Igbo Elodumari, the Yoruba text, Dwele Shoinka translated and titled his from Yoruba to English. He, he titled it In the Forest of In the Forest of Ele Dumari. 
he wrote in the preface of that book that when, when he was asked to translate that text, he thought that he would be able to translate the text while sleepwalking. That is, he thought that it would be really easy for him while sleep, uh, sleepwalking, his hand behind his back, his, fourth, his, the, his left hand behind his back while his right hand, while he cradle, while he cradles a calabash of palm wine with his right hand. That is, he wanted to establish that he thought, oh, I know these languages, both Yoruba and English. And translating from Yoruba to English or English to Yoruba should be easy. But he said, oh, I learned my lessons the hard way because it was taxing. It wasn't easy for him. So do not just take, oh, you need to be able to ask yourself, is this an idiom? Which, which idiom in the other language best translates this? For example, if you say, Mabolo Jasi, Mabolo Jasi, you won't say in English that it didn't become reality or all my efforts went futile. You need to find an idiom that draw a blank. Draw a blank, all my efforts, all my efforts drew a blank is what you use, is what you say to, if you want to adequately translate Babulu Jasi to your, to English language. So you need to ask yourself those questions. It's not easy to translate. Okay. And there's some expressions in languages when they use body parts. You will usually find another idiom in the other language where the body part, part is used. The, the body parts are also accrued to in the other language. For instance, when you say, I caught him red handed. When you, I caught him red handed. How do you translate that to Yoruba? You say, Mugba <laughs> Mubai. In uh, literal translation, would just be like, I caught him like this. And then you need to explain that the person did this. That's how you translate. Uh, the person is the apple of my eye. The apple of your eye. The apple of your eye. How do you translate that from English to Yoruba? You rather say, Enyojumi. Are you getting this? You need to ask yourself, is it an idiom? Is it a proverb? Is it an expression? And then you look for another term in your, in your, not what of was in vain. Yes, was in vain, it's the meaning, but it doesn't do adequate justice to that translation. You need to find an idiom for an idiom, a proverb for a proverb, and what have you. So translation has lots of benefits, lots of benefits for social interaction. For social interaction, for social interaction, for understanding, mutual understanding between nations. There are times where you aren't able to, you want to get something in another language and you do not understand that language. What do you do? You find the translated version of that statement, of that news. Another thing that translation does is it helps to transport education. It helps to trans uh, transport languages. For instance, you want to learn how to speak French. You want to learn how to speak French. You do not know anything about French at all. Yes, and your Jumi is correct for, uh, yes, apple of my eye, you're correct. Um, anas, aziz, and your Jumi is what you use, not my beloved. Despite the fact that you got the meaning, you haven't done adequate justice if you say my beloved. Okay? Okay. Yes, and your Jumi is correct. So <laughs> translation also helps you to translate. Uh, translation also helps you to translate adequately uh, to transport educational languages. Like I said, you want to learn a language, English language, you want to learn French. You do not know anything about French. What do you do? What do you do? You meet someone 
who can speak English but cannot speak but can, uh, who can speak both English and French so the person helps you to translate concepts from French language to English language it's not possible for you to just start studying French on its own that's why when you see books books Muhammad Sida Abu Bakr in Hausa apple of my eyes means okay okay Masoi is Masoi and Masoi are relating to apples or any fruit or highs. Let me know in the comment section. Muhammad Sidi Abu Bakr. You need to find someone who can speak both languages the language you want to be able to speak, right, and the language you do not know anything about. So, what's the person helping you to do? The person is helping you to translate concepts from the source language to the target language. That's it. So translation helps you to transport education and languages. Many of the things we know right now aren't in English originally. They're in Greek, they're in Latin. Latin was once the language of civilization before its death. Before we had no speakers of Latin, Latin was once the language of civilization, language of education. What happened? We now use English language and what do people do? They, what, before we got those language, biology, physics, mathematics, what happened? Those concepts were translated from the source languages to our target languages, okay? There are terms that look the same. Now let's discuss, it's all just H51. Let's discuss the steps in translation. There are just two basic steps. And we have many kinds of translation. Depending on your goals, we have the literal translation, we have the idiomatic translation, and we have the unduly free translation. For Literal translation. Literal translation is when you translate word for word, sentence for sentence. You're translating a word from, another, uh, from the source language to the word in the target language. You're using the same structure. You're using the same forms. So you're saying, Olu died yesterday. Oluku Lano, that's the, you're translating the same thing. But literal translations may not be effective at all times. Many times you need to use idiomatic translations because languages are not sufficiently the same. Languages are not always the same. Sometimes you may not find the same term for the same thing. You may need to improvise. For example, uh, Wale Shoinka called it invective naming ceremonies. When you have to name words, when you have to find generic terms. Generic terms are general terms that you use for something. For example, the word fruits. Some people also call it hypernym. We also have hypernym, hypernym. H Y P E R N Y M or generic G E N E R I C. When you find a common term, for example, fine arts, F I N E A R T S, fine arts is a generic term. That expression, fine arts, is a generic term for things like painting, music, drawing. They're all under fine art. Fruits, your apples, your oranges, your bananas, cucumbers, they're all under fruits. Fruit is just like a generic term for all of them. So sometimes you may not find the exact word in your languages. You need to look for an adequate term that covers it. For instance, when Wale Shoyinka translated that text, he said one of his problems was trying to find an adequate term in the source text to the target text. 
For instance, we have words like inwi, words like alujonu, in that source test. In English language, they may not have those terms. So he had he improvised with the term gomit, G H O M I D, G H O M I D, gomit. Okay. Sometimes you need to improvise. You need to find a term. Now let's study the steps to idiomatic translation because. Literal translation may not be practical many times. For instance, the structure in languages may differ. The structure in English language is different from the structure in Yoruba, in Arabic language. You can say Doroba Zaidu Amro in English, in, Yoruba, in Arabic language. You can also say Zaidu Doroba Amro. But in English language, that is not practical. You can't say, beats the Zaidu Amro. Everyone would ask you, what are you trying to say? What do you mean exactly? So you can change the other, the, S, the principle, the sequence, the sentence order in Arabic language, while you can do the same in English language. So if you say you want to do literal translation, you will translate what people do not understand you will translate something else. People will ask, what's this? People will not understand what you're trying to say. So you need to go for idiomatic translation. Idiomatic translation. So what steps do you need to follow in order to translate adequately? Because of our time, I will discuss two of those steps. Two, the first step and the last step. For that, because here it's not a pra it's not a full translation class just for you, because everyone needs to translate. Everyone has the responsibility of translating. In fact, when we speak English language, what do we do? Many times we translate in our thoughts. We think our thoughts are already in our mother tongue. We think in Yoruba language. We think in Hausa language. We think in Igbo language. So what do we do? We transport those thoughts from English, from our mother tongue, those thoughts in our head, to English language. Many times, if you're not a good translator, if you aren't able to translate from your head in English language, in your mother tongue, to your target language, which may be English or French or Arabic, you will translate wrongly. You will speak English wrongly. You won't be speaking correctly and adequately. Yes, um, Anas, Aziza, Jazakumullah, and thanks for thanks for joining me. It's really interesting. Daraba Zaid Amra, Zaid Daraba Amra, both are correct sentences in Arabic language, but if you change the other in English language, you won't get what you actually want. Okay. So the first step is that you discover the meaning in the source text. Because no matter what you do, what you're actually transporting, what should be your major focus? Before you start talking about, okay, I want to translate idiom for idiom, proverbs for proverbs, adjective for adjectives, nouns for nouns. What should be your main focus? What should be your major question, the primary question you should be asking yourself is, have I translated the meaning? The meaning is the first thing that you need to do. The meaning is the primary thing that you need to transport, the meaning, the first thing. So you, you should discover the meaning in the source language. And that goes back to the fact that you should be good in both, you should be good in the use. When it comes to the use of both languages, you should be really good. Now, after this, you need to discover the meaning. If it is, if the meaning is negative, you should be able to transport the, a negative meaning. 
that sometimes when you translate the same thing in the source language just as it is in the target language you will have another you may be translating a positive meaning while the meaning communicated in the source language is a negative meaning so you need to be asking you you need to ask yourself that question you need to keep asking yourself throughout your translation have i done justice to the meanings have i done justice to the meanings you need to ask yourself that question then after certifying yourself after saying yes to that answer okay to that question i have done justice to the meaning then you go to the next stage sometimes words may be the same words may be nearly similar that you ask yourself which word in my language best translates this for example in english hamlets H A M L E T is different from village. Village is different from town. Town is different from city. City is different from nation. You need to ask yourself which word if the if it is hamlet what's best translated? If it is street hamlet H A M L E T what words best translate from the source language to the target language? So just as you have those words in English language, you have the same set of words in Yoruba language. You have ileto. Ileto is different from abule. Abule is different from idile. So you need to ask yourself, what words do I have already in my language? What words are in this source language? How do I merge the meanings? What are their meanings? So you're transporting meanings from the source language to the target language. Okay? Okay. Yes. So it's not just, and it's not just about knowing that language. It's about knowing the kind of language that is used in the source language the the variety it may be in another dialect for example in arabic we have classical arabic we have the modern arabic we have the colloquial arabic which is it in the source test so if you understand modern arabic you may not be able to translate another word you may not be able to translate exactly to another language for example in modern arabic Sayaro, Sayaro to, it's a car in modern Arabic. But in classical Arabic, it refers to passengers. It refers to passengers. Sayaro. You need to come and ask yourself, sit down, ask yourself, what's the meaning in the source language? What's the meaning in the target language? You must be translating the exact meaning. Okay. After discovering the meaning in the source, the exact meaning in the source language, you now need to re-express that meaning in the target language. How do you re-express that meaning in the target language? When you overcome both, when you are able to go through these two steps, you get the answer you want. Then after re-expressing the meaning, the expression of the meanings covers you asking yourself is this an idiom if it's an idiom an idiom for an idiom a proverb for a proverb just like i said for example if you want to translate ofesefe what does it mean in yoruba language it means to run to run okay you already know the meaning you've discovered the meaning if you want to re-express the meaning in the target language do not try to run away because that's not an idiom it's not a proverb. It does not adequately translate that term. In English, you rather say, he legged it. He legged it. L-E-G-G-E-D. Or, he took to his heels. He took to his heels. H-E-E-L-S. 
he took to his heels or he left it. You need to be able to re-express the meanings. And you must have an adequate knowledge of the use of grammar, grammatical knowledge of the source language and the target language. Your rules of Kankad must be on point. You must understand collocations. Yes, he took to his heels, thank you. And he legged it, leg as a verb, G-E-E-L-E-G-G-E-D, L-E-G-G-E-D. You must be adequate when it comes to the grammar. For instance, you may translate, you may know the meaning, but re-expressing, but with the re-expression, you must have an appreciable knowledge of grammar. If you translate wrongly using <laughs> poor grammatical expressions, the person ought to, when you translate a written work of an author, the authors are usually really happy. Thank you so much for rendering my book in another form. Thank in another language. Thank you for making it easier for other people who do not have access to my source language to understand it. They will thank you. They will appreciate you. They will appreciate your effort. They will even pay you. You may just take a text. If you're a really good translator, you may take a text, translate that text, and send it to the publisher of the of the of the text in its source language they will appreciate you and they will pay you if that translated text is printed so they should say good you're really good thank you so much for doing this that's why you see when you read the biographies of authors they usually include that the text of this text has been translated into 300 languages they want people to be more interested. Oh, since this text has been translated into many languages, it means many people, many people are interested in reading it. And what does it mean? That means the book is valuable. It's just like writing one million copies sold. They use that to sell many books. One million copies sold, 300 million copies sold, so that you will be interested. But if you translate strongly, the person will ask you to please do not publish that. That's not my text. Your grammar should be on point. So you should have a, an adequate, you, your knowledge should be adequate, not really perfect. Because even when you're perfect, you still need to do your research while translating. You should understand collocations, you should understand colloquialism, you should understand usage. Is it formal? Is it informal? For instance, in Yoruba language, everyone is everyone that is older, everyone that is old enough to give birth to you is just like your mother. So when you see your the your mother's younger sister in english it, it, that person is your aunt but if you want to refer to that person or if you want to call that person while discussing with that person what do you say do you say eh, aburo mommy me you rather say mommy so you need to understand the cultural context in both languages mommy is correct in that context mommy mother in english language is also mommy your aunts they are your mommies your, your, your uncles, they're your daddies. You call them daddies, not what they actually, not what, they, what you should actually call them, not who they actually are. So you need to ask yourself, have I discovered the meaning? Have I been able to express that meaning in the target language? So if you do not understand both languages, you will not be able to get the adequate meanings. If you do not understand the target language, you will not be able to re-express the meanings. That's all. If you have questions, feel free to. Thank you so much, Um Anas Aziza Balogun. Thank you. That's it. If you have any questions or contributions to this discussion, feel free to use the comment section. Feel free to use the comment section before I say goodbye.
Do you have questions? Do you have questions? Do you have questions? Do you have questions? No questions, okay? No contributions, no comments. All right, no questions. Okay, let's say goodbye for now. Okay, but before I say goodbye, I should talk about false friends and Gallicism. Please, switch it up, please. False friends and Gallicism. Gallicism. False friends and Gallicism. There are some terms in both languages, the languages that you're working with. They may be the same in form. They may be the same in structure. They may be the same in spellings, but many times they do not mean the same thing. They're called false friends. False friends, F -A, false, the opposite of true. F-A-L-S-E, F-A-L-S-E, false, false friends and Gallicism. They look the same, but they are different. Like in Yoruba and English, I think many of us will, many of us, uh, many of us will understand that better. The words, two words, Akin, please write in the comment section, Akin in Yoruba language and Akin in English language. Akin is a name in Yoruba language. Akin is used to say similar to, similar to, for two things to be similar. So if you want to translate and you see Akin, you want to translate the same as, the, you want to translate them as both, uh, both having the same meaning. You see that you have, you may have succeeded in the first step. That is the meaning, and a lot of discovering the meaning of the source language, but you will feel in the second, uh, in the, in the second text. Ha akin and Akin. No, they have the same spelling. Akin, A uh, in Yoruba language, A-K-I-N. In English language, A-K-I-N. Akin. Akin means to be similar to something. Akimbo in Yoruba language is a name. Akimbo. They have the same spelling. Akimbo. A-K-I-M-B-O. The same spelling, but it doesn't mean a name. It doesn't refer to a name. A akimbo is a name in Yoruba language, but it's something else. It's a posture in English language. Just like this is to stand akimbo. This is it. To stand like this. That's it. I. The word I. Your I. A-Y-E. A-Y-E. It's not... Aye. It's Aye in English. It's, a, it's the name of, it's Aye in Yoruba. It's the name of a bird. It's the word for bird. But in English language, it refers to your eyes. So those are examples of false friends, and you should beware of them while translating your text. Many times, most times, 99%. They do not have the same meanings. They are false friends. They just look the same, but they have different meanings in the languages that you're working with. So beware of them. Okay. Say goodbye to them. Do not look at them. That's it. That's all for today. As someone typed, I got values. The word is false friends. Friends. To be friends, intimate friends, close friends, false friends. Uh -huh. Someone just, uh, people, whenever I do lectures like this, whenever I do live videos like this and say so and write something, write a post, a beneficial post, many people usually say, I got values. 
I got values. There are certain words in English. There are certain words in English. They are both countable and uncountable. They are both countable and uncountable. I once discussed that a word may have several meanings. For example, the word appreciate, to appreciate something. I appreciated your gift. I appreciated your, your coming. I appreciated your attendance. I appreciate you for coming to my class. That's one meaning, to appreciate something, to thank that person. There's another meaning for something to increase in value. The land continue to appreciate different meanings. So when value refers to your customs and traditions, your beliefs, your cultures, you use S, values, the Yoruba cultural values, the American values, the Americans uphold their value, their values with S, with the plural marker S. However, when the word is value, value, it refers to being worthy, being valuable. Okay, so in that instance, it doesn't take an S. I got value. The book has loads of value, not values. You won't use that S in that context when it refers to something be worthy and valuable. Do you get that? Thank you so much for joining me. That's all I think. No question. No question. Okay. Yes, Akin Akimbo. False friends. I understand communication. Yeah. That's all for today. Yes, 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 yes. All right. That's all for today. Till thanks so, so much for joining me. Everyone who wrote in the comment section, Fatima Salahuddin, Ridwan Abdullah, Abdul Fatah, Umu Anas Aziza Balogun. Thank you. Thank you, Sabu Abu Israel, Aisha Abdul Rafi Abdul Razak, Stephen Isaac Daniel. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye for now. Till next week, Saturday. Join me live by 8 a.m. and let's have another educative discussion with regard to communication mastery and language proficiency. Success at your fingertips. Bye.